Hey everybody. So a couple things. Um, I guess I feel like I need to preface this a little bit. If you haven't picked up already on the fact that I am you get what you get with me. Um, you've probably noticed I don't prepare really for many of my videos, if not none. I really don't. And I don't know if it's just a flaw of mine. Um, some may consider it a flaw. I might be in that camp with them. Just so you know ahead of time here, another sidebar of a sidebar is I might get pulled over. I'm at Orlando International Airport currently waiting to pick up my husband, but I am literally parked on the shoulder because I don't know what flight he's on. I don't know what terminal I should go to. So this is me just using the time I have since, you know, with a busy schedule on vacation, um, I don't really have a whole lot of time. So. This has been a, a talk that, or a message, an encouragement that I've been wanting to put out there for a while and I have an opportunity to be able to do it. Um, so back to the sidebar first though, is you've probably noticed I'm not, um, I don't prepare. I probably should have prepared more for this one and I think I probably have more than any of the other ones. Just, you know, thinking about what I would talk about but not necessarily outlining it in any particular order. So this will be longer than most of you would probably appreciate. Um, I just, it's a deeper talk, okay? So I think like, I'm either really just lazy or, you know, or maybe it's just my style. I'm not using my personality as an excuse because it's not an excuse, it's just who I am. Um, I do wanna get better as a person and improve in things. So I don't think it's completely lost on me that there are things that I need to to work on. Um, I'm just not sure that this is one of those things. Um, I'll be careful about what I say and how I say it. I'll try to anyway because I don't have a filter. You've probably picked that up too. So I'm going to do my best. Um, I'm I'm probably not going to get emotional because I've, I'm have i past this and I'm free from it. And so what I want to encourage you with today is, Oh, the other thing, did I say part one, part two? This could be a part one, part two kind of thing too if I don't finish before either my husband texts me or I get pulled over. <laughs> Wouldn't that be entertaining for all of you? Anyway, I digress like usual. Um, so I'm free, I feel free. I am. This burden of mine has been lifted and I want that for all of you because it is such a real thing. It is such a real thing, identity. I don't think that most of us would know that we have a problem or um, a uh, delicate identity issue, um, but I would argue that we all have an identity issue. Um, and I'm sure they all stem from far, 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 far back in their lives, right? I mean, the homes they grew up in the life they lived um, in their childhood, in their adolescence, in their adulthood, etc. So I'm just going to share my story with you about identity. Um, and again, it's my story. You can take what helps you and you can leave the rest, okay? This is just my story and I want to share with you how I have been liberated from this issue um, with identity, it's my identity. Um, high school, I would say that it started before this, but um, you know, people give you labels, right? And so while it started before this, and I think it, it does for most people, especially girls, I mean, I don't know that that's fair to say. I'm sure for most people it starts in grade school or whatever, not really elementary school. You're not quite there, but I think you're getting there at that age. High school, let's start there though. You know, people give you labels and um, and I think the labels I was, I was given, I wore more like badges of honor. Um, I was known as SB Poppin' Chips because I didn't party with everyone else. Uh, playing sports was more important to me. I was captain of most of everything I played. I think everything I played. Um, and so, it was important to me to set an example. I took it, I took the role seriously, and that probably sounds a little pretentious, but 
Is that the right word? Um, um, but I, I took it seriously. So you wouldn't find me after a dance in an after party or drinking in the bathrooms or, um, experimenting with this or that, um, or having sex. I vowed to wait for marriage to have sex. Um, I don't know if that was just a fear thing. If any of this was just a fear thing, I think that it was more just, you know, wanting to stay on the straight road, the straight and narrow. And so sports really kept me in line, I'd say. It was my saving grace in high school. And the labels I was given, SB Poppin' Chips, um, The Virgin, and, um, you know, no, Sarah would never or Sarah would never or I, I was almost reliable in a sense you know because I never wavered and it um, again I'm not sure if it was just that I was confident in who I was or if it was fear-based but that's who it was that's who I was in high school I did have a long-term boyfriend I mentioned um, a couple videos ago in high school three and a half years um, pretty much the entire time so but I we never had sex so he was probably teased but I never was um, but then you know I, I grew up in a small town um, the whole town was 3200 um, obviously it was a seasonal town a resort town so people um, it would triple in size in the winter and in the summer times but it was um, just a small town so everybody knew your business right and so so I wanted to make sure that the business they knew was straight up real and reliable and I think it was but I could not wait to get out of there okay I could not wait um, graduation came obviously there was a little bit of this and that with friendships okay I'm not gonna sit here and say that high school was peachy keen for me just because I held my ground because it wasn't um, there was a lot of friendship issues as most high schoolers will go through um, misunderstanding um, assumptions made um, I might have thought bigger of myself than I should have I don't know I don't know I think for the most part I was well liked but um, there may have been a few people who didn't care for me and I think that's natural I think that's gonna happen um, I was a pretty confident girl I think at least I was that was the facade okay I don't think I knew it was a facade just yet, but um, I would say it was more a facade because I was still just learning who I was. No, none of us know who we are at that age. I think we have a good idea and, you know, even before college I knew what I wanted to do, you know. I wanted to do, to do physical therapy. It was related somewhat to sports, um, athletics, helping people with their bodies and how to move them and um, keep them in shape and rehabilitate and see transformation happen. All of those things, I knew that's what I wanted to do, okay? So keep all those things in mind. College comes around, I'm a big fish in a small pond moving to a big pond and nobody knows this fish. Nobody knows this fish and I wasn't sure how to take that and I didn't I didn't put this together Okay, I didn't call myself a big fish in a little pond. That was something somebody said a long time ago Maybe a therapist that wouldn't be surprised So here I am known moving to some place where I'm not known kind of fun and exciting and in another way not at all because I had to kind of reestablish myself and um, while that's exciting in one way it's not in another because um when you don't know who you are, you're trying to mold yourself to what other people think you should be, right? So I did this freshman year in college. Um, so my academics, my athletics, all of that stuff came pretty easy um, in high school and before. Um, I could have gone to a private school to play college ball, um, but I chose not to. I wanted to experience college life. I didn't want to be... Um, nailed down to a schedule and uh, truthfully to discipline myself I one of the biggest regrets I've ever had it's it's a real-life thing okay we have regrets and that's probably one big one for me is not playing ball because I think it would have kept me kept me a little bit f more focused on the real deal so but I am who I am because I experience what I experience so college comes around 
I don't go to class. I don't feel like going to class. None of my roommates are going to class. I'm skipping class because guess what? I am in a dorm. I am not under a roof with my parents. I've got nothing to prove to anyone. Granted, these classes cost money, my money, my parents' money. Let's be honest. I don't. I still have to pay those those loans off. But um, never showed up. I mean, I'd go to a couple, but they were like fun classes. But I, it came to a, a situation where um, I don't know if that's a cop or not. Hmm. Uh, I don't think so. It came to a point where um, I couldn't do the physical therapy program. The, the school I was going to it was just really hard. All the undergrad classes were really hard. I think when I started school I was gung-ho and I was ready to take this this world on and I was excited about my future and I was excited about being in a new place with new people and experiencing new things. But what I came to find is that the academics didn't come so easy this time around. Things just didn't happen to me easily anymore. They didn't just fall into place. I had to work really hard and I still didn't quite understand and I still didn't quite excel. So that really got to me, I think. I think it really um, got me down. And so that's when I started not showing up at all. Obviously, I changed my major. I don't think I changed my major to anything specific. I just wasn't in pre-physical therapy anymore, so I wasn't taking the hard science and lab classes, although anatomy was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was my favorite class. Biology was fun, too, but the other ones were hard. Chemistry, man, uh, you chemistry people. I just, it was, yeah, no breaking bad over here. So, um, anyway, that was discouraging. There was a lot of cute boys around, lots of pretty girls around, and I just wanted to be in their little huddles, be in their little groups, not knowing who I was at the time. Um, experimented with alcohol. Um, I think a couple times in college, just fast forward, I got alcohol poisoning. I think I had to be scraped off the uh, cement at the East Lansing campus for Michigan State. Yeah, so I was in the hospital getting pumped full of fluids, okay? So this was probably my sophomore year or something. Then um, I started getting suicidal thoughts, so I'd experiment with drugs and to scare my roommates just to get a rise out of them, see if they took me seriously. So obviously I'm struggling with identity, right? This is what this is all about, identity, and so... I decide to bag the whole college thing, pick up and go and start my life over because surely you can run away from your problems. Surely you have nothing to do with your baggage. It's literally you just leave it, dust your hands, and head on to the next location. You guys know that that's not really true, right? Like, you're the common denominator in your life. Your problems follow you wherever you go. That's what I learned when I moved to Colorado, which was a lot of fun, which I'm still really glad that I did. But the, the winter before I moved, I was supposed to move to in January of my junior year. I had this really fun um, party that was planned for all of the Boyne City people, all the people that were in school or whatever, okay, all the people I, I went to school with in high school um, and some older grades as well. Um, we went to another campus. We were doing a Halloween party. Um, I had plans on being one of the Charlie's Angels with some friends of mine, okay? But without letting me know that they found these amazing black feather wings, they were on sale, they were so cool. Instead of letting me know, the day of the party I called and confirmed, you know, where they're going to be, where can we meet, and all that stuff. They said, oh, by the way, we're going to be fallen angels instead of Charlie's angels. <laughs> cool? I'm like, no, not cool. Farrah can't show up to the Halloween party without her crew. What the heck? I was totally PO'd, let's be honest. So what do you have in college? Mostly you have black clothes, at least I did. Not because I was goth necessarily, but because, like how I said necessarily, again, didn't know what I was. 
um, it's just the slimming the slimming color, you know, because I did gain 15, my freshman 15 plus some in college. So, so my slender, my slendering color. So I'm thinking I will go goth. I will go goth for Halloween. And so I dyed my hair black. Yes, I did. And I made my hair or my face really pasty. So um, it looked like I hated the sun. And clearly I do not. Although I freckle, I don't tan. But it looks like I like the sun, doesn't it? Um, and I feel like I should be giving you more eye contact, but I'm really kind of keeping an eye on things. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, and yeah, I, okay. So the long eyelashes, black eyeliner, I was killing it and no one recognized me do you know how much fun it is to go to a Halloween party with all your old friends and people you wish you were friends with who didn't know you when you went to this party they didn't know you and you totally played it off like I mean it was fun but again probably too much alcohol um, so yeah that whole incident the dyeing the hair thing didn't work out in my favor I ended up going to get it corrected I told them to tone it down they went a little further four hours later I was sent home with fried hair melted literally melted inches off of my hair and so they told me not to shampoo it for a while and I didn't for seven days thought I should by the time my mom decided to visit and it fell out in my hand so my mom on her visit that weekend buzzed my hair off no joke you want to talk about someone who doesn't know herself, right? And buzzes her hair off. Bald. In November. Bald. Two months later, moving to a completely different state, not knowing anyone, okay? So, so far we have alcohol poisoning a couple times, hospitalized with IV. Suicide attempts couple I don't think I would have taken it all the way but it was definitely an attention grabber I definitely thought the people in my life would be better off without me three I'm bald moving to Colorado where I don't know anybody I've never weighed more more in my life than I weighed in that moment weight wise I I, I ate so I had an uh, unhealthy relationship with food okay I ate for comfort I was bouncing around from boyfriend to boyfriend to boyfriend. So, you know, as soon as I moved from Boyne City, um, okay, he just got here. I'll give us five more minutes. It might be a part two situation. Um, as soon as I moved from Boyne City to my college of choice, I just lost everything, right? So along with the alcohol, I began, um, sleeping around um, I dated a basketball player then I dated another basketball player I didn't have sex with the first one but I had sex my first time with the second one he wrecked me um, and so ever since never had the self-respect okay never had the self-respect I don't think I ever had the self-respect um, maybe I had the swagger and whatever but never self-respect and so um, I gave up my virginity just after a couple months with this guy and and then after that it was easier it was easier to do and um, along with the alcohol and the drugs and uh, the promiscuity I got raped a couple times a couple times um, so I ended up with a stalker relationship in Colorado and moved back um, to where I grew up and all of that was crazy so like you know in Colorado I experimented with a lot of drugs like cocaine and um, ecstasy and I'll tell you the truth I had a lot of fun I had a lot of fun because you get to escape but I'll tell you the next days you 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 just question what life is all about you just do there you know that there's this nagging nagging sensation in you this emptiness that you feel and um, you're not sure what it is, but you want more for your life. You want more. In fact, I read everything from Norman Vincent Peale to Tony Robbins, and I'm still, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, um, 
how, or a millionaire mind, all this stuff. Like I was always a dreamer, always purpose driven, always, always. And um, here I am with so much emptiness, knowing that life is supposed to be bigger than this. And so move back, the stalker guy totally chased me out of there couldn't handle it. it took one phone call my dad took a flight one way and he drove home with me with my Toyota Camry I think it was an 89 it was tiny and he's six foot five 240 pounds big man and everything I could fit in that car and we drove 22 hours home he rescued me from there I love it there though that man will never take Colorado away from me because I love it it's beautiful Anywho, um, I'm thinking I should probably go catch my husband now. I think I'm going to continue this soon. So stay tuned. Love you.